Develop success from failures. Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. Dale Carnegie. Doesn't that turn what most people think completely on its head? Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. What does that mean for us? It means that we chart these markets and if things aren't going your way, then you just keep plodding along because that discouragement, that failure is sure to be putting you in the right direction. You're learning what not to do. And as you learn what to do, your trading will get better and better and better. 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. That's all we ask, but it's got to be every day, my friends. It's not two days a week. It's not four days a week. It's five days a week when the market's open, five days. Each and every day, just a few minutes, you will develop that intimacy as per our quote from yesterday. The intimacy comes, again, from being involved. So let's jump into these charts. Everything down for the day except Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was pretty much flat. I mean, technically up 0.05%. So five tenths of 1%. That's pretty flat. But the big crasher today is the Qs, and I'll get to that in just a minute and show you my PSQ trade, which is going swimmingly. Okay, let's look first at the S&P 500. It's down 2.27% for the day. We talked about last week our interim high with higher than average volume. This week, we have a red spinning top. We're already just through third, just through Wednesday, going into Thursday, and we're almost to average volume. So we may be going, going short the S&P this next week. We can see where the two-day has, has, it has dived below, almost said dove below, dived below that weekly trend line. And of course, we saw where on the half-day chart, it had zoomed down for two and a half, uh, let's see, one, three days then tried to make its way up starting on Monday morning and then sort of died Tuesday afternoon and then just boomed down on Wednesday. But that's nothing compared to the NASDAQ 100, the tech stocks. And again, what? There's only five really holding it up well. They're not doing well, struggling mightily down 3.59%. And if you're trying to jump in now, you've waited too late. Now, I told you guys at the end of last week, I was executing a down play, which I did. I'll show you on PSQ, which is the single inverse of the NASDAQ 100. Here is the trade. I initiated it on Friday afternoon at $41 a share. Jumped in, I set my profit and loss bands. How did I come up with what to set those at? Well, I used the ATR on the two-day chart, and you can see that I set them at $1.13, which was 2.76% profit and loss. If it were to go down to 2.76%, uh, I'd pull that trade. Well, it's almost made me 2.76% right now. Now, you can see when it initially started, that was on Friday. It was down on Monday, down a little bit on Tuesday, but then popped up, remember, in the afternoon, and it was just holding back and hammered up on Wednesday quite beautifully. Now, you might say, am I going to sell my whole trade when it hits the profit ban, which hopefully it hits tomorrow. Now, it could be a big down day tomorrow. This could seesaw back and forth. We're in the summertime trading zone, right? Yes, this is the crappiest time of year to trade. Why? Because we typically don't have the volume. But look at the volume already. We're already at average volume, and it's just Wednesday. Uh, and this is, again, on the inverse fund, PSQ, single inverse for the NASDAQ 100. So what have I done? Well, the minute I put in my order, I then, of course, set my sell at $1.13 up. And if we, and again, if we go to the settings, you can see here I got in at 41, the ticks, which is $1.13. So my sales price is 42.13. We're about 13 cents away. 
That is my loss band. If I hit 39.87, I would sell and take my loss, live to trade another day. But I will be, uh, I've already set to sell half my trade at the 2.76% gain, and I will let the rest of it ride. For how long? Well, for as long as it goes. And again, I've got ideas on when I might pull it, but at this point, I would let it go. And we shall see if I hit that tomorrow and sell out half my trade. I hope some of you, if not many of you, are practice trading with me. I am real money trading, but that is my money. I do not give advice. I do not ask you to follow me. I, in fact, I do not encourage you to follow anything I do. We're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We do not give market advice. Many times I'll tell you what I'm doing and how things are going for me. I will explain to you what's going on. I spoke with you about, of course, my short trade on the uh, HODL. Actually, I did that short trade on the inverse of Bitcoin. Uh, that did well for me. I also, we talked about jumping in on this latest Q's trade. And again, I want you to practice these things. When you think you're getting good with them, then of course throw $100 in. Do a little fractional trade as we call it. And again, what that means is, is that you're putting just a small amount of money. If you lose 20%, it's only $20, not $100,000 and you lose 20,000 bucks. So again, want you to practice this stuff, particularly when we're talking about inverse funds. You really, really need to practice this. Why? Because inverse funds are different. They are different than regular funds. They are, again, reset on a daily basis, super high fees. They are different from your typical equity, your typical ETF or stock. So that's why I encourage you to practice, trade them, learn them, see if you like them. You may not. You may just want to let the market go down, sell your position like we saw here with the Qs. You take your profit, you then let the market reset and jump back in later. There's any number of things your trading style should base be based upon your personality. But, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> we can tell <clears throat> how the two-day, all that downward pressure on it, all the downward pressure on the half day, we had that day and a half of up movement and then things just killed over this morning with all that volume. So things are going in the direction as per our charts, which is all we want. We don't care if things go up or down, my friends. We just care that we can track them accurately, right? Right. Now, what's up with 20-year U.S. government bonds? Now, this is interesting. We have an interim high here with average volume. We have a red spinning top right now, and of course, we see that we're approaching average volume. Does this mean we're going to go short on TLT at the end of the week, that may be a possibility. Whether you want to do it or not, based upon how screwy the charts have been lately, but again, might be something that you consider a practice trade on. We are sure watching it. You can see where things have, do have dived, almost said doved again, dived below the weekly trend line on the two-day and on the half-day. What about gold? Again, gold reaching up and touching and then sort of peeling off down 0.35%. We can see the two days below it. Half day still hanging there above. And when I say below it, I'm talking about the weekly trend line. Half day still hanging above. It ended with a spinning top, almost a doji with all that volume. So we'll keep an eye on gold. Now, again, if we are having a systemic crash in the market, I'm not saying we are, but if we are, what do you expect gold and Bitcoin to do? Well, my friends, I will tell you that typically all those things roll over. Remember the COVID crash when everything went down and people were shocked. They were like, why is Bitcoin, why is gold going down? Shouldn't they be going up? Well, the problem is when people's stock positions really get trashed, there's a lot of short calls, margins. There's things that people have to sell in order to take care of other things. And typically, when you have a strong pullback, 
many times everything goes down. And we do see gold pulling back. Not a lot, but again, we have this ceiling here. And gold so far has not been able to surge past it. So we'll keep an eye on gold. HODL, like I said, was pretty much flat for the day. Up in the morning, down in the afternoon, it did technically go up 0.05%. And of course, we can see on that two-day chart where things have pulled back some on Wednesday. You can see it on the half day. And of course, on the weekly, we still have an up candle reaching a higher high. We'll keep our eye on things. I don't know why. I was pretty sure I'd already reset that. Maybe I just didn't save it. There we go. And we'll keep our eye also on volume. Volume's not great so far. Might be close to halfway there. So we'll keep an eye on things as the week continues to move along. That is where we are on Wednesday going into Thursday. I always love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. Hope you're doing these practice trades. Uh, Patreon members, as soon as I finish this, I'll be uploading it and recording for you the weekly vertical, I'm sorry, not the weekly vertical crossovers, three-wave trades and charting cryptos, commodities, and currencies. Weekly vertical crossovers will come at the end of the day on Thursday. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.